In this video, we will take a look at how the CPU fetches and executes instructions from RAM using the BitMachine simulator. Watch these two videos to learn about how each of the CPU registers work and how frequently used data is handled using cache. Let's take a look at how a simple program that adds up two numbers and stores the result works. We first need to write the program into RAM. So let's go through how this program needs to be constructed. A program is made of two things. Instructions, which tell the CPU what to do, and values that the CPU can work with. In real life, RAM is not split into sections like here, but this makes visualizing it easier. Both the instructions and the values are individually stored in memory addresses that the CPU can use to locate and access specific areas in RAM. An instruction has two parts, the opcode, which is the instruction itself, and the operand, which is the memory address the instruction will be carried out on. Essentially, the opcode is do this, and the operand is to this memory address. So our simple adder program has to be written using these available resources. Let's start by putting in the values, as that is more straightforward. We know that we want to add up the numbers 5 and 7, so we just add these two numbers into two memory addresses. As memory is random access, we can technically put the values anywhere, but we will just place them into memory addresses 30 and 31. Now we can add the instructions. As the CPU is just a glorified calculator, we can think of it as one when writing our code. If we were to perform the same operation ourselves on a calculator, we would first have to press the number 5 on the keyboard, which here translates to loading the value 5 into the CPU. When we open the operand dropdown, however, we don't have 5 as an option. It is because, as you remember, operand refers to memory addresses, not values. So we have to select the memory address where the value 5 is stored, in this case, 30. Now the number 5 will be loaded into the CPU. The next thing is to add the value stored at address 31. At this point the CPU will add the two numbers together. Finally, we will want to store the result back into memory so that it is saved. So we select store and the address where we want the value to be saved. It is important to note that in memory, instructions and values are all stored as binary numbers, but we use plain text for clarity. Before we run the simulation, let's take a look at the registers we need to know about. First of all, the CPU has an internal clock. A tick of this clock signals the beginning of a new fetch decode execute cycle. The faster this clock ticks, the more instructions the CPU can execute a second. A modern CPU with a 3 GHz clock speed can execute 3 billion instructions every single second. Next, we have the program counter. This is a bit misleading as it doesn't count anything, but rather keeps track of where the CPU is up to in the program's execution. The program counter always points to the memory address of the next instruction, so the CPU knows which instruction it needs to fetch next. Currently, it is set to zero, as that is the address of the first instruction to fetch, and it will increment, in other words, increase by one each time an instruction is fetched. This helps the CPU keep track of where it is up to. When an instruction is fetched, it is loaded into the current instruction register, so that the CPU can interpret or decode the instruction it is currently working on. When a value is loaded into the CPU, it is stored in the accumulator. This is the register where values are kept and where intermediary steps of operations are stored, which we will talk about again soon. As you can see, there is a corresponding register for both types of data stored in RAM. Instructions go to the current instruction register, and values go to the accumulator. Let's run the simulation. The first thing that needs to happen is the tick of the clock, indicating a new cycle. As we are fetching an instruction, the CPU has to know which instruction to fetch. To find this out, it looks at the program counter. As it is set to zero, the CPU will locate memory address zero and fetch the instruction from there, loading it into the current instruction register. Now that the current instruction has been fetched, the program counter must be incremented to ensure that it always points to the address of the next instruction to be fetched. At this stage, the CPU decodes the instruction, which is to load the value stored at memory address 30 into the accumulator. The CPU is now ready to execute the instruction. It locates memory address 30 and loads its content into the accumulator. Remember, 
The CPU does not care about what is actually stored in the memory address. It just knows to load whatever is in there into the accumulator. This completes one cycle. The clock ticks and the new cycle begins. As we are fetching an instruction, the CPU once again needs to know which instruction to fetch. For this, it looks at the program counter, which is currently set to 1. So it locates memory address 1 and fetches the instruction into the current instruction register. With the current instruction having been fetched, the program counter must be incremented to point to the address of the next instruction. The instruction is now decoded. It says, add the value stored at memory address 31 to the value stored in the accumulator. So the CPU locates address 31 and adds it to the value in the accumulator. This is the reason why this register is called the accumulator, because the intermediary results of operations are stored here, gradually accumulating. If we were to add up 100 numbers, the result of each addition would be stored here. Let's start the final cycle. The clock ticks and the CPU looks at which instruction to execute. Memory address 2 is located and the instruction is fetched into the current instruction register. As the current instruction has been fetched, we must increment the program counter. Store32 is now decoded. This means store the content of the accumulator back into memory address 32. The CPU takes the value held in the accumulator and saves it back into memory address 32. And that is it. The program has completed. If you would like to have a deeper understanding about the CPU and its more advanced registers, or know how cache is used to store and access frequently used data, watch these videos. If you would like to give BitMachine a go yourself, or learn how to write more complex programs on a machine code level, click the links in the description.